Hello YouTube, welcome to Kempton Does. And today Kempton does a remote for the Blackmagic Micro Cinema camera. Okay, just wanted to show you the features of the remote. We have, of course, focus being the most important to me. Iris, which is available on the front of the camera but is not always easy to get to. ISO. And also white balance. Now these do click through sequentially and if you miss the point you're looking for you're gonna have to work all the way back but it's still a lot easier than going through the menu the camera of course uses a 15 pin DB 15 connector as shown here I decided not to use the back of the connector but to add some weatherproofing tape instead on the back I've added a quarter 20 bolt that attaches easily to a universal clamp or to a 15 millimeter clamp for small rigs. Although I decided not to use it on this project, a latching switch can be used for a record function. This one has a nice fun end of the world vibe to it. You can also zoom your lens in and out with the 10k ohm joystick. In order to power our iris and focus control, we need a servo tester. I picked this up on Amazon for about eight bucks. There are a couple other models out there, but I've had good luck with this one. Inside you will see two of the servo testers, one for the focus and one for the iris, like I mentioned before. The switches are wired directly back to the camera with the ground. The servo testers I have three wires leading to my custom potentiometers. I've pulled off the original and I've also wired a jumper where the former potentiometer was mounted to the board. First time I tried this I had a little trouble grounding the servo testers. I gave them each their own ground and I found that the switches didn't work when I did that. What does work is if you wire in serial from one to the other. I have a diagram of this I'll show you now so you can get a better idea. This is what the servo tester looks like out of the box. First thing we're going to do is pull the knob off the potentiometer on the top, remove case, so we have this. Then what we're going to do is we're going to remove the switch. It'll then revert to LED 1, mode 1, which is normal operation like we want. I believe mode 2 goes straight to center and mode 3 cycles a servo back and forth continuously. And neither one of those are useful to us. Next we're going to remove the pins on this side and the pins on this side and the potentiometer. This pin of the potentiometer and this pin of the potentiometer need to be shorted together in order for the system to work after we've removed it. This group of nine pins are actually only three functions in a row. Signal in, five volts in, and a ground. This is a list of all the functions that can be remotely controlled. The channels I selected are shown on the right, but I wanted to go through the list and explain why I chose the functions I did. First we have the record function. I never had any trouble using the record button on the camera. Didn't want to waste one of the four available channels on something that worked well as it was. Second is the zoom function. The zoom lens I have does not back focus, and the zoom is not smooth enough to be useful in a shot anyway. If I need to zoom in and out for a framing a shot, I will simply use the control on the lens. Next we have the shutter angle. I set the shutter angle ahead of time and have yet to need to switch it on the fly. Finally, we have the audio levels. The audio level remote function only controls the built-in microphone on the camera. It does not adjust either of the external source levels, which makes it useless to me. 